Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to look at another question in the lit code problems, popular problem series. This is question number seven, how to reverse an integer. Uh, again, this is a very popular question. So we're going to look at a solution algorithm and the approach. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so if you go to litcode.com, uh, you will find this problem. If you click on the problems, uh, you would find this question number seven, reverse integer. It's an easy question according to lit code. You can see it here. But remember, whenever they say it's easy, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy. That's because there are always some constraints. And if you follow those constraints, then uh, it starts to become difficult. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so let's look at which companies are asking this question. If I go here at the bottom and it, so I would see, you know, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, Uber, all the good companies are asking this question. And let's say if you're interviewing with one of those companies or a company that is not from this list, uh, usually they are looking for questions to ask and they're not going to just, uh, you know, randomly create. Well, some might, but mostly they might pick one of the questions from top 50 lit code questions and you know sometimes they modify sometimes they ask as it is so if you get lucky and this question comes in so i would recommend you to go through this entire video to understand the problem given a signed 32 bit integer x so this is an important part to remember signed 32 sign means uh, it could be a negative or positive a variable called x returns with its digits reversed so if i have 12 it becomes 21. if reversing x causes the value to go outside the signed 32 integer range which is again 32 bit is you know 2 raised to 31 and then return zero okay so if it's going outside this range it returns zero Assume that the environment does not allow you to store 64-bit integer, signed or unsigned. That is why we are we are limiting to 32 because we cannot store 64-bit uh, integer, right? So you read this usually multiple times and try to grasp uh, all the key information from here. And usually, I would not rely on lit code example. Or if you go for an interview, they they might just give you a sample example. Or they may not they may not even say this, right? They may just say, okay, this is the situation. Now deal with it, right? So it's your duty to ask this to the interviewer, saying, okay, uh, what if it's a negative? Yes, because an integer it could be negative. You preserve the sign and reverse the integer, so you get. A minus 321 okay good what if uh, the last digit is zero then you reverse it you ignore the zero because now zero in the front zero 21 doesn't make sense so you return 21 okay good and obviously if you if you have zero which you return zero and one other thing they haven't mentioned here reversing an integer it's pretty simple if you can convert into a string right and you just flip the string and there are built-in functions to do that. But if you're not allowed to do that, which is a restriction, and I guarantee you that will be the restriction uh, when they ask you this question, then this question becomes a little difficult. All right, so let's get started. What are the first thing you wanna do uh, if you get this question or any question in an interview, you wanna first write down all the possible test cases, all the weird ones and normal ones, and then you wanna build the algorithm uh, you know, on a paper uh, and using a pen. If you have a computer like this, you can do it right there, uh, just as comments, and then follow the algorithm to write the code. If you jump into the code from the beginning, uh, as a lot of people do, what would happen is that you get lost in the code, you get stuck, and then you will panic. And then you would say, oh, I don't know, how did this happen, right? So let's follow the process. So let's start with some test cases. Uh, if you are given, let's say, 123, obviously you're going to return to 1321, right? Uh, if it's minus 123, then you would return minus 321. Uh, if you are given 120, 21. Given 0, then you would return 0. And then if you're given the, the biggest 32-bit uh, number, a positive one then you would return zero and also 
either it's positive or negative, you will return zero, right? So this is your pretty much covers all the test cases. Uh, let's think about the algorithm. Uh, now, these two are actually edge cases. So you don't have to worry too much about it right now, but you want to cover it first, right? And these are normal cases. Uh, how do you deal with negative number? If you notice that the difference between these two is just a sign. Uh, first, figure out if something is positive or negative. Uh, remember the, the sign and then reverse the positive number and then put back the sign. Uh, this one is just like the first case, uh, except you would get 0 to 1 and then you can convert into integer that give you 21. So that's pretty simple. Because it's a number, how you reverse it, right? The first case. In order to reverse it, let's understand what this 123 is made of. So if I split this, um, you know, in a mathematical sense, then 123 is nothing but 1 multiplied by 100 plus 2 multiplied by 10 plus 3 multiplied by 1. Now, all I have to do is, if you want to reverse it, reverse the number, keep the multiplication as it is, right? So if I just take this and just reverse the number, which means 3, 2, and 1. I would need to get each number and then uh, do this format, okay? Okay, so how do I do that? To get the length of uh, a number, uh, you can use log 10. So math library inside JavaScript has a function called log 10. And this would give you the the log of whichever number. So let's say if it's a 123, then it would give you two, which is one less than the length. So all I have to do is if I just add one to it, this would give me three, the length. Obviously this would be two something. So I would have to also convert into a, a, um, an integer. So I would say parse and then this. And if I console log this, I would get three. So this is how I can get the length. Okay, so that's get that's out of the way. I'm gonna remember this. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is, how do I get each digit from here? Let's say if I wanna get one out of here, right? Then what I have, all I have to do is, so if I take 123 divided by 10, uh, I need just to need to divide by 100 and this would give me one something, right? So if I, 100 is nothing but 10 raised to two. Uh, this is um, a cool syntax, uh, 10 square, 10 raised to two. And if I console log this and run this, I'll get one uh, 23. And if I, I made a typo, let me run it again. Okay, I'll get one. So this is how I can get it dig each digit uh, one by one. All right, so let's get that going. So my objective would be uh, looping through each number by parsing this information, removing that number, and the remainder would be then 23, removing two then and removing three. Okay, so let's get to the coding. So I would need a function. Let's call this reverse, which takes an argument, s, x as an argument, and it returns the reverse number. And if I, let's say, call this, let's say 123, it would return me 321. Okay, so we're gonna implement all the logic inside here. So first we can get that, uh, the corner cases, these two cases out of the way. Let's say if the x is less than, all right, or x is greater than positive number, uh, two is to 31, or it's zero. In that case, I'm gonna return zero. To test this out, if I just, well, this is supposed to be seven. This is supposed to be triple equal sign. It's a comparison operator, not an assignment. All right, so you get a zero, which is correct. So all three cases would get zero. So let's not worry about that now. So we're gonna look at now the normal cases, which is this. Okay, so for that, I would need, let's figure out if it's negative or positive. If it's a negative, then I need to preserve that negative value, right? So I would say const is negative equal to, uh, I can find out by comparing to zero. If it, x is less than zero, then, then is negative is true, else it's false. Simple, right? Then I can take that number 
and then convert into positive if it's negative if it's positive then it will stay positive but i can just do it anyway so i just say const uh, let's call it p int math dot absolute and i can just pass x here okay so this is now positive and if i pass minus 123 uh, the p int would be positive 123 and we preserve the the sign inside this is negative variable all right now let's get the length we already have this this here so we can copy and paste here that which we figured out so const length equal to this so that is simple and then we need two variable the final one that would we will return so we need to initialize that so let's collect final equal to zero and we also need a remainder because uh, remember we're gonna we're gonna take one number number by number so in that case if i take remove the one then I would have remainder 23 and then I would um, take two and then remainder three. So I would need a remainder. So which would be initially same as the X. So I can say remainder equal to, which is nothing but the positive X. I can start. So all I have to do is loop through the number. Uh, we're going to loop through from the reverse, from the, from the back, right? So three, uh, two to zero, two, one and zero equal to the length so i'm going to say length minus one so that is two equal to zero run till two one and zero subtract one from it so i minus minus so if i console log run this this would give me two one and zero right two one and zero i'm getting undefined because i'm not returning here right now so that's fine don't worry about it um uh, can i can call this digit uh, equal to uh, as I said I can take the remainder which will be initially the whole number divided by 10 raised to i so initially this would be 2 so I'm dividing by 100 and I have to do the parse int this would give me 1 right so digit is 1 now how do I get the remainder the remainder would be and I would do 10 so if I take the the whole number and instead of just dividing if i try to find what it would be the 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 remainder right so if i divide 123 by 100 i would get 23 so that would be my remainder so i'm splitting into two one and 23 so one would be the digit and 23 would be the remainder and then for the next loop the remainder would be 23 then i'll split out two and the remainder would be three and so and so forth and the next thing I need to do is a multiplier the multiplier would be equal to what we can do is 10 raised to we can take the length minus 1 so this is 2 uh, minus I so for I equal to 2 this will be 0 so we multiply 1 uh, with 1 2 with 10 and 3 with 100 you know, equal to final plus uh, we can take the digit and then multiply it by mult and then if I just console log this right now I would get 321 which is correct right however if I pass minus 123 uh, this would not work right so I need to uh, put that sign back so what I would do is uh, return if it's negative in that case i want to return minus final else i want to just return final so now if i run this i would get 321 now let's try 120 and what do we get 21 so it also works now there is a, a little better way of doing it so in the next video which is a little different than this but i will show you the different method as well now let's look at the complexity of this algorithm. What is the complexity of this algorithm? Well, uh, for three-digit number, we are basically going digit by digit. So we are visiting each number only one time, right? So the algorithm, so the complexity of this algorithm would be O of n, where n is the length of the number. So it's a linear algorithm, and I don't think you can do uh, better than that because you do have to visit every single number if you want to reverse it All right, so that's it folks I hope you learned something new from this video and if you did please like subscribe and provide a nice comment 
uh, and you can follow me uh, I have a, a Facebook group where you can ask questions uh, which is on algorithm and data structure in JavaScript specifically uh, you can follow my YouTube channel other channel uh, this is my actually interview nest is my second channel my primary channel is uh, text tube so you can follow that uh, and if you need help uh, in terms of uh, you know getting trained if you are giving interview and you need help um, I'm planning to have small session like hourly session with very minor fees uh, where I can you know teach uh, a group of people uh, algorithm and data structure in JavaScript uh, you can join this discord group uh, to get more information and just in case of this 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 discord group uh, is disabled let's say uh, for a few years from now or something like that feel free to email me uh, my email is uh, in the channel and thank you for watching